Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it again with another post game review slash analysis slash recap video. This time obviously we'll be doing Giants versus Bengals week 3 preseason game. The Giants won the game, came out in a close one, uh, 25 to 23. Moving on in the preseason to be 3 and 0. Oh. My general impressions of this game while watching and then, you know, towards the end of it when it was coming down was wow, this had to be the most boring preseason game I ever watched. I'm just like, I'm pretty sure like my mind wandered so much during it. Like, I don't know, for those of you who didn't watch it, a lot of it had to do with the Bengals crowd. Like with the Giants crowd when they were playing at home. They were always excited. We always had a good turnout. That Bengal Stadium, man. Oh, Jesus. That thing was damn near empty. And they didn't react to anything, man. They didn't react. I mean, I didn't expect them to react to any Giants plays. But they didn't even react to any plays from their own team. It was crazy. It was just a really quiet and boring atmosphere. But, um, <laughs> let, me, let me get that out of the way. But also, it, this was probably our worst preseason game, I want to say. And um, a lot of y'all will say, well, how's it our worst? We uh, put up a good amount of points. We came out with the win. All that. You know, Daniel Jones had a great game. Wayne Gallman had a great game. There were, you know, a couple receivers that stepped up. But the reason I say it's the worst is because, man, it seems like such a big step back from the progress we made last game. And that's not good. That's not what you look for. And what you look for, if you check my preview video, was consistency and success and consistency and performance and in my opinion the team didn't the team didn't really show that last night so let me just start top to bottom for my notes here you know uh I, when i took these notes it was like as the game was going on so uh i might go offense defense offense defense but i was taking notes as the game went on the first thing i noted was uh eli Eli's performance very much reminded me of uh, the Green Bay for performance in 2016 uh, in the playoffs where he came out to play, but a couple of his receivers certainly did not. He went 4 for 8, uh, 41 yards, should have had a touchdown and should have been 4 for 6 because uh, two of his incompletions were drop passes and they were catchable drop passes by the same person, Cody Latimer. I don't know, maybe he was a little bit off his game tonight or something. But he dropped a really easy th th third down pass and albeit a slightly more difficult uh, touchdown pass that he got both of his hands down, which is why I say it was catchable. He got both of his hands around the ball and it looked like he was a come he was going to come down with it. But the Cincy defender, I guess, hit him a little hard and he dropped it. But it was a really nice, uh, nicely placed ball. Eli, Eli looked good. You know, he didn't look great, but he looked good, and he looked comfortable in the pocket. There was one throw where the pocket was completely collapsing around him, and he just stood in there like prime Eli and chucked it downfield. And I'm pretty sure it was that same Latimer throw. But Eli, for the most part, he looked good, and I wanted to see him more. The Giants did what I said they probably would do in my preview video, and that is not use this as a quote-unquote dress rehearsal game, because that's where a lot of teams are... Um, sort of drifting towards with the preseason they do not use any games as dress rehearsals they use their first four games as a way to get back into the style of regular season play and I had a feeling the Giants would do this because we already have way too many injuries on the team and they're concerned and they have a right to do so I mean look at uh Carolina I don't know what exactly happened with Cam Newton but during the game on my phone I got a notification saying he left the the preseason game with some sort of foot injury not sure if it's serious or not but whatever the case may be, it stands that uh, Coach Sermer and the Giants training staff and whatnot, they're, they definitely are right in their concerns. And for now, they did the right thing in not playing our starters too much. Kept the same thing going. We had them in there for one drive. Uh, the starting offensive line stayed in for, I, I don't know, I'd say maybe three drives at most. And the starting defense was in there for one or two drives also. Speaking of the offensive line, uh, the protection was okay. It wasn't as good as last week, which is weird because we're playing the Bengals, a team not exactly known for their defense unless, you know, it's football. This year they could come out and shock everybody and be one of the best defensive teams in the league. Who knows? But the protection was okay at best with the starting offensive line. 
I was really surprised um, at how they got beat by the Bengals a couple of times. The starting, our starting tackles got beat by the Bengals a couple of times. Even like when the um, when the second team defense was in there and the offensive line was playing with Daniel Jones, both of our tackles got beat. And, Jesus, man, Danny Dimes got sandwiched on one uh, on one possession. But the offensive line seemed to take a step back. I'm not sure why. They kept up uh, great protection in the run game, but the pass game seemed to take a step back. I hope to see that improve, and I hope to see them be where they were last week and even above where they were last week. Will Hernandez, oh my god, I don't know what was with him this game. Uh, during the first preseason game, he had a holding call, and in the postgame interview when asked about it, you know, Will, he's a bit of a... He's not the greatest person in the interview because he's kind of tough with his uh, answers and questions. He's just that type of guy. But, you know, in his first, uh, the first preseason game post interview, he was like, you go look at the blade and check, see if it was holding. I mean, guy, it was clearly holding. But this time he had three penalties, but the Bengals only chose to accept two because, you know, it was in their best interest. But Will, bro, I hope you only have these penalties during the preseason because there, there were three terrible penalties. One was a face mask. One was a holding, or was it two was holding, one was face max, whatever the cause was. Dude had three penalties, and it was kind of crazy to see, especially considering we all expected him to have, like, a step forward this year. You know, I hope he does take a step forward because he's definitely a great offensive lineman. I just want those penalties to be cleaned up. Moving on to the starting defense. Or the defense in general, according to my notes, uh, there was good pressure. We were getting good pressure during the game, but we weren't really getting there to the quarterback. And speaking of which, Ryan Finley, who was in there for most of the game for the Cincinnati Bengals, man, did he look good. All right, Ryan Finley, props to the Bengals and props to Finley, even if it's just one game and whatnot. Ryan Finley looked great out there, okay? He looked... <laughs> this guy, man, he looked... He looked like a starting quarterback. I mean, I, I don't watch anything of Ryan Finley, so obviously I'm basing all of this off of his one performance, but he looked really great, man. He was cutting up our defense a couple of times, too. It was like we couldn't stop him, but, you know, we props to Ryan Finley. But our defense was getting pressure. Once again, not as much as we did last week. We were getting some pressure from, um, from the outside a little bit. I believe Dexter Lawrence got to the quarterback one time, but Finley got the ball out just in time. The guys I wanted to show up didn't exactly show up. I believe that called out uh, Grant Haley, Lorenzo Carter, and Julian Love. Well, they didn't show up, but we did get two sacks from the man, X-Man, O'Shane Zimenez. Somebody I've been really excited about since we drafted him uh, on draft night. I think I said that was our best pick, you know, value-wise. He was definitely a steal. I have no idea how he dropped to number 90, but I'm glad we got him. Got two sacks today. Keon Adams also got one sack. Josiah Toefa towards the end of the game got one sack. And Sean Chandler got one sack. So, so in general, pressure was there and we were getting sacks. But three out of those five sacks came towards the end of the game when, you know, it was third team defense-ish and like almost a third team offense. But it's weird. The pressure was there and the only time... Like, the numbers say we got sacks, guys, but trust me when I say because the three of them were towards the end, I don't really count them as much as I do the first two from O'Shane. And even though we were getting pressure, across the board, our secondary, and, you know, and you know, our defensive backs and our safeties, they weren't good this game. And that's why I was saying Ryan Finley was cutting us up, and we're lucky they didn't put up, the Bengals didn't put up much more points. It was very much like a stalemate for up until, I want to say, the third quarter or whatnot, but... Our secondary across the board, I did not like their performance at all. They were giving up a lot of yards. They were getting blown in coverage a lot. There was a couple of miscommunication plays. Um, like I believe one touchdown on Dreville Preppers was completely a miscommunication. He was looking at a guy that he thought might have came up and run, and then he didn't realize the pass happened, and he was a bit too late to catch up with that Bengals receiver, and it turned out to be a touchdown. But overall, from our starting defense to you know the 53rd man, that's on that secondary, I don't know, in the third, fourth string, needs to improve their play. They looked out of their element, and I won't get on them too much because it's the first time they're playing on the road, even the veterans, since, like, Indianapolis last year. That's a long time, you know, it affects people, you gotta get back into the, gotta get back into the role of it, 
and since it's the first time in a long time, I'll give them a bit of a pass, but it definitely needs to improve. I was not at all impressed with what our secondary did today. Our special teams, the next thing on my notes here, our special teams, Jesus, save for one play. Save for one play this entire preseason. Our special teams has been terrible. I don't know how, because last year our special teams was one of the best in the league. And now, of course, we have a different, we have different punt and uh, punt returners and kick returners. You know, both in the regular season and preseason. Re regular season being because Corey Coleman is injured and whatnot, and in the preseason because we don't want these guys to get injured, so their backups are playing. But my God, throughout the entire preseason, our special teams has been horrendous, guys. I won't sugarcoat it. There's been so many uh, muffed uh, punt returns. You know, when the guys. They have it in their hands, but they're not set, so they dropped it. And, you know, sometimes they lose it to the next team. On when we're the, re, uh, when we're the kicking team, I've never seen throughout the preseason right now the first guy on that punt return team uh, to be tackled, you know? It takes us, it's like, our fourth or fifth guy before whoever's returning it to get tackled to the ground. And I'm just like, I don't know what's happening, but we need to improve, I don't know, ball awareness? hand-eye coordination, tackling in general, whatever it is, tackling in general. This was something for um last week that was improved against the Bears, but seemed to take a step back again. But our special teams are horrendous, save for one play, and that was the play, the uh, punt return by Britton Golden that went back for a touchdown. And shout out to Britton Golden. He stepped up today along with Reggie White Jr. They both stepped up, and even Darius Slayton. Who I completely forgot was clear to play this game, so I forgot to mention him in my previous video. But those three receivers definitely stepped up, definitely got themselves noticed by the fans and the coaches. Let me wrap up special teams real quick. Britton Golden hit have a muff punt that was recovered by Cincy, and that goes back to me saying, I don't know what needs to change, I don't know what needs to improve, but something needs to happen because our special teams right now is ridiculous. Alger Rosa seems to be the only person on there that knows what he's doing. But going back to these three receivers, Britton Golden had a good game. He actually led the Giants in receivings, uh, two receptions for 59 yards, one of them being Daniel Jones' best pass of the night. Uh, it was a deep, like I want to say, 20-something, maybe even 30-yard pass like down the middle of the field that Golden went up and got, and I was surprised he had that ability to go up and get it. I mean, he was a name that you've heard in training camp and whatnot, but never really to the extent that would make you think he's somebody that could possibly break out. Somebody that we did hear about was Reggie White Jr., who had a single reception for 36 yards, and that was also Daniel Jones's, I want to say, second best pass. It was, listen, the reason I'm impressed with this play is because it's more so a great catch than a great pass. Not at all to say that the pass was bad. It, it just was a bit underthrown. It was definitely supposed to be a touchdown, uh, a touchdown play. You could tell that because we got down to the one. But it, because it was a bit underthrown, I'm impressed with how Reggie White adjusted his body to catch it and get it away from the cornerback and still, you know, keep himself in bounds. But it was definitely a bit underthrown. It should have been, you know, I'd say a yard or two more, uh, you know, under the pass and would have been a touchdown because I have faith in Reggie White to bring it down. And I just realized that I was talking about Darius Slayton while using the name Reggie White. My bad, guys. I'm sorry for that. I apologize. I am a bit tired, if you can tell from my voice, I'm doing this right after the game, but that was Darius Slayton, not Reggie White, my bad. And Darius Slayton is somebody who's improved throughout spring training, throughout OTA, throughout training camps. I expect good things from him, maybe great things. Reggie White, the same thing, he had a great pass too, uh, but that was all Darius Slayton, my bad guys. Speaking of these passes, Daniel Jones continues to be the preseason MVP, guys. 9 for 11, 141 yards, probably should have had a touchdown. But he continues to be the preseason MVP, definitely performing at a high level, definitely right now the best quarterback performance on our team. And I, I'm just, I have nothing bad to say. The only thing that comes to mind is that on a couple of passes similar to his first preseason game, he stares down his receivers a lot. But other than that, I have no problem with him. He's doing everything right, even though it's a vanilla offense, he makes it work. He makes, uh, make sure everybody sees his arm strength, make sure everybody sees his football IQ they see his timing and placement are that of an NFL level quarterback they see that his poise in the pocket and everything I mean he got absolutely demolished on two plays by the Cincinnati um defense where they just somehow got through 
our starting offensive line, I think it was. And then he came back, he made that big throw to Slayton on one of them, and the other one he came back and also made another great throw. He just came back as though it didn't bother him at all, and that's something that you don't see from rookie quarterbacks that much. All I have to say is what I said last video, I hope he translates it into the regular season for whenever he comes out there as our quarterback. Because we've seen it before where guys perform great in college, they perform great in preseason, they come out and wet the bed in regular season, and I hope he doesn't do that. And finally, the last thing I want to mention, Alonzo Russell again this week. Russell with the hustle, man. He had a couple hustle plays. He had a great uh, two-point conversion from Kyle Aletta to Alonzo Russell, where he just snagged the ball down, you know, used his big body to get it and help the Giants take the lead. He also, on that punt return by Britton Golden, he blocked two people on that play and stayed up. Uh, he was running with Golden and blocked two guys, allowed him to have a nice clean lane to go into the end zone. And, and Lonzo Russell just continues to show up on the hustle plays. Had a couple receiving receiving openings too, but once again, he wasn't really hit. But uh, Russell is definitely somebody that's going to make this team. I want him to make the team. He's a great player to have, it looks like. Looks to be in the right mentality and whatnot. Would love to have him on there. He's definitely making a name for himself in the hustle. But that's what I got for y'all guys. Definitely a bit more uh, longer than uh, last week's video, but that's because I felt like there was a bit more to cover. We're definitely trending in the right direction, but there was a couple of steps back that step back that needs to be fixed. I hope it's fixed. Don't, I do not expect to see all the answers next week against the Patriots, but I would hope that we have them by the time we play the Cowboys in week one. So that's what I got for you all today. Leave your comments down below and let me know what you all think. Like, share, subscribe. I'm out. Your right, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Your